Computers and other information technologies have become essential tools for working, playing and learning, increasingly blurring the distinction between these three activities. This e-lecture, which can be considered as an extension of our e-lecture Computers and Linguistics, provides an overview of human language technologies, that is, those technologies that can be used for the machine-based processing of natural language. First of all, we will define the term human language technologies. We will then look at the central goals of human language technologies and will underline everything we say by looking at the central applications associated with human language technologies. Guided by theoretical as well as practical goals, work on human language technologies, the abbreviation is HLT, aims to enable computers to process spoken, that is speech, as well as written language in intelligent ways in order to make it easier for humans to access and produce information and to communicate with one another and with machines. The common work on human language technologies is to develop computational models of language that have sufficient detail to support various tasks involving natural language. Now such models of natural language are at the heart of any computer program that performs natural language tasks. These models vary in terms of sophistication, components and how faithfully they model human language processing. In general they consist of the following. They have to deal with representations. Now representations encode background knowledge about language and the world as well as capture processing results. In natural language processing systems background knowledge is stored in pre-compiled knowledge resources such as grammars and lexicons whereas the processing results are dynamically generated during processing. Procedures are formal representations or specifications of transformations of input representations into output representations. And these are performed during language processing using one or more knowledge sources. Examples include parsing, generation and translation. Procedures are implemented in the processing components of a system. Well, and finally, architectures combine the processing components and knowledge sources in configurations that implement a specific sp processing strategy. And this can be sequential, parallel or incremental. Well, and they support one or several applications. Now, computational models are developed for various reasons. One reason is the scientific motivation. Now, the scientific motivation for building computational models of natural language is to obtain a better understanding of how we use language to communicate. Computational models are being developed to test complex theories of human language comprehension and production by observing how they perform and where they fail. It is possible to refine them and to make specific predictions about human behavior that can be explored, for example, in psycholinguistic experiments. It is hoped that such an approach will eventually help us to acquire a deep understanding of how human language processing works. This common goal has created a new field of interdisciplinary research called cognitive science. Well, and then there are practical applications. Work on computational models of language with a practical focus is motivated by the belief that natural language processing capabilities will revolutionize the ways we use computers. Most of human knowledge is recorded in linguistic form. Current computer systems like the applications represented here, machine translation or dictation systems, 
Now such computer systems can access only the form of this information. That is, for example, they retrieve a document from storage and display it, but they cannot access the content. Machines that can understand language could access this content for the benefit of their users and even contribute new content of their own. Furthermore, human language technologies can allow computer systems to be accessible by everyone and to support them in more intelligent and flexible ways than before. This becomes increasingly important as computers continuously appear in new areas and applications and more and more people with different backgrounds are using them. For technological purposes, a computational model does not have to reflect the way humans process language at all. All that matters is that it works for the application it is intended to support. Well, like my smartphone here, which can process speech input. Sprachtechnologie Well, and there I am. So here is the result. So can you see it? The system recognized the word Sprachtechnologie, which is of course language technology in English. I'm using the German language on my smartphone. Since the early 1990s, there has been a shift in emphasis from theoretical research towards the development of large-scale practical and evaluable applications. And a growing number of human language technologies are finding their way into human life. Well, the ultimate goals. Well, engineering efforts in human language technologies aim at sophisticated systems like HAL which in terms of performance, flexibility and robustness are comparable to the human mind. HAL is science fiction's most famous computer, the HAL 9000, HAL for short, from the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. Let's have a look at it. Open the pod bay doors, HAL. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Dave, although you took very thorough precautions in the pod against my hearing you, I could see your lips move. All right, Hal. I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Without your space helmet, Dave. Okay, that may suffice. Now, HAL combines various technologies which already exist today, but their level of sophistication, of course, is far below that displayed by HAL. Now, first of all, HAL is a supercomputer. Then, HAL is equipped with fault tolerance and reliability. HAL is capable of doing speech synthesis and speech recognition. And HAL, as you may have noted, can perform lip reading. HAL uses common sense reasoning and HAL has the ability to understand and display emotion. So HAL can interact with humans in natural language. Today's speech recognition systems have already reached a high degree of sophistication and we are not too far away from HAL anymore. By the way, if you convert HAL into a new abbreviation by using the next letter in the alphabet in each case, what will you get? Well, here you are. I, B, M instead of H, A, L. Isn't that funny? Well, let's look at 
the categories of human language technology next. The set of human language technologies can be subdivided into the following overlapping and interacting categories. Speech technologies process or produce spoken language, giving machines ears and a mouth to speak. Language technologies process or produce written language. This includes both low-level techniques for text pre-processing and text production and higher-level techniques for understanding and generation of linguistic content. Knowledge technologies are concerned with the acquisition, representation and utilization of non-linguistic knowledge about concepts and tasks in the real world by computer programs in order to solve problems in some application domain. Well, and multimedia? Well, as documents and presentations now commonly combine spoken and written language with other media, human language technologies increasingly have to face the challenge of processing and producing multimedia content. Multimodality, another key issue. Human-human communication combines language with facial, gestural and other cues to convey messages. Multimodal interfaces emulate this use of multiple modes of communication by processing combined input modes in a coordinated manner with multimedia system output. The goal is to make human-machine interaction more natural, efficient and robust. Today we find various marketable HLT applications associated with these areas. The common belief is that machines which are competent language users will be more useful to humans in a wide range of applications. For example, in dictation systems, in reading machines, we find authoring aids and document processing. And there are further applications such as intelligent tutoring systems or machine translation systems, well, we already discussed them in our e-lecture, computers and linguistics. While the systems developed for these tasks to date generally fall short of the human ideal, they are nonetheless useful in their small niches and they are constantly improving. Let's now look at the contributors to human language technologies. Research on computational models of language has many different names. Now here is a list of names with frequently encountered labels. On the board behind me you only see the abbreviation so let me spell out the full labels for you to add on your whiteboard printout. AI stands for artificial intelligence. CL stands for computational linguistics. LE stands for Language or Linguistic Engineering. NLP stands for Natural Language Processing. SLE stands for Speech and Language Engineering. And SALT stands for Speech and Language Technology. Furthermore, there's a wide range of related fields with the following main contributions. Linguistics, Computer Science, Psychology and engineering science. Let us look at these contributions in more detail. Now, the first one is linguistics. The development of human language technologies requires a theoretical framework within which the components of a language model can be defined. Linguistics, the scientific study of language, seeks to unveil the structure of human language. It provides human language technologies with linguistic models, terminology and a subdivision into levels of processing from sound to meaning. Computer science is next on my list here. Since most computational models of language eventually have to be implemented as computer programs, human language technologies heavily depend on contributions from computer science, the study of the principles and use of computers. Computer science provides algorithms, data structures, 
programming techniques, principles of software design and implementation, and formal mathematical models and methods. A contribution of psychology comes next. Now, since human language technologies research and development seek to model human language behavior in machines, they can benefit from insights of the scientific study of human behavior and the human mind, that is, psychological questions. An engineering science, indicated by this tool over here, well, building HLT systems for practical applications often requires developers to use models and techniques that cover a broad range of linguistic phenomena and that can deal with incorrect or incomplete input. For example, electrical engineering and mathematics have provided HLT practitioners with probabilistic and data-driven models of speech and language that achieve broad coverage through training based on large sets of language data and handle ill-formed input by assigning probabilities to language strings. Okay. This e-lecture provided you with the central ideas of human language technologies and the main concepts behind it. I hope to have shown that human language technologies research and development is a truly interdisciplinary endeavor bringing together contributors from various academic disciplines. Although most human language technologies are still far from achieving human level performance there are numerous useful applications and this my small smartphone here is just one of them. Thank you.